this is me, True Raptor. This video is an updated version of a tutorial I made a while ago on how to install Minecraft mods on Windows 10. Now, the only thing you're going to require for these mods is a decent amount of randomly allocated memory or RAM. You can check these this through certain settings in Windows or whatever operating system you use, but this is specifically for Windows 10. Now, when it comes to installing mods, you want to know which version you plan on using as mods are version specific. You cannot use a mod that is made for 1.8.10, 8.9 for 1.12 in most situations. Minecraft Forge will not allow you. Now what is Minecraft Forge? Well, Minecraft Forge is something that bridges the gap of, between the developers who develop the mods themselves and the core Minecraft game. Now, you need this to be able to use mods. In this tutorial, we'll be installing 1 .8, the 1.8.9 version of Minecraft Forge. Now, you'll want to go to the site minecraftforge.net and click on this little files thing up here to get to here. Now, you'll select 1.8 and then select your subversion under that. You'll want to click on this and it'll bring you to this and fly. Do not click on these as these are spam sites and will give you a whole lot of stuff you don't want. Now, uh, now normally you would say this file, but since I already have it downloaded, you probably don't want to. I don't want to download it again. Now you want to open up your downloads folder, and you'll see this. This stuff is for later. You want to right-click this and open it. Actually, before you do that. Now, a lot of times I I like to make uh, the directory for my mods folder inside the .micro folder, but this is not necessary at all. So if you like having easy access to it, you can just go to your desktop, right click, hover over new, create folder, and then make sure to name it so I don't know, I'll name it 1.8.9 modded. Now. You want to open this. Now you want to click this little folder icon so you can copy the address. This will be important. So reopen your downloads. Or well, if you if I had not been an idiot, you wouldn't have had so open your downloads. See and this is where Minecraft Forge is gonna you want to install client, installing servers for another day. Now, I know we just copied our directory, but we don't actually want to change this directory right here, as this directory is the Minecraft folder, and then we'll get a whole mess if we try to install the client somewhere else. So anyways, once you have install client selected, click OK. Okay, when it says successfully installed client profile, profile forge, when it says it successfully downloaded it, you want to right click on the Minecraft launcher. You want to open it. Looks like I've got some updates to do. So once your launcher is online, you want to go, You see when you see the screen, you want to hover over to installation and click on it. Now as you can see, I have a lot of installations. You want to click new. Now, you also want to name this so you can keep track of it. So I'll name it 1.8.9 modded tutorial. Now, what's very important is you want to change the version. Right here, it'll by default say the latest release. You click on this and you can look in here. Now, you need to scroll down until you find, if you remember the name, of your Forge release. See, you say 1.14, so we want to scroll all the way down to 1.8. There's a release 1.8. Now, a lot of times the Forge versions may just pop up at the bottom, so let's scroll all the way down here. Yep, here they are. Here's 1.9. Now, 
here's where it's important. Remember this little folder we made? We copied the directory so that we could open this up and paste this. And so now it will download all of the files it needs into here so we can get to them easy, easier. Now, this menu is very important and this is why you needed to know what your RAM was. Modern Minecraft does not, it needs a lot of RAM. Now, I recommend just as a general rule of thumb, okay, changing this number right here, you can change how many gigabytes you allocate to the game. By allocate, it means how many gigabytes of RAM can you use because Minecraft is very RAM heavy. Now, as a general rule of thumb, you never want to allocate so much that you have less than two gigabytes. You always want to have two gigabytes of unallocated RAM space. And if you're really looking to do other things on the computer while playing the game, you probably want to leave four gigabytes. I'm just going to... Four gigabytes is a good amount to start with. If you have... if And in personal experience, even two gigabytes can support around 60 mods. Now, you want to create this and here it is. Now, before you, so, if we can go back to our browser, so you want to find whatever mod you want. A popular one is Buildcraft due to its, you know, abilities to automate things. Now, like what I said earlier, they only work on certain versions, so don't download a 1.12.2 version if you're using 1.8.9. You often, most times, the latest version will work unless in certain circumstances. Now, now that we find the late the latest version, we want to click download. Minecraft Forge is also one of the best places to get these mods, as it is pretty trustable. As I've said before, I already have a lot of these things downloaded, so I'm not going to cancel this. Now we want to go back to our downloads. I find that that you want to cut these things because they can start to uh, take up space. Now, you want to create a folder in here called mods. Don't capitalize this, otherwise it won't work. Open up this folder and paste whatever mods you found in there. Once you've done that, you can you need to click this little thing here, select your installation, and uh, run it. It might take a minute to download everything. Uh, make sure you're checking the names of your versions. Anyways, this might take a little while. Okay, so once your uh, Minecraft loads up, you should see this screen now. What may look a little different is that you have a new tab, the Mods tab. This is where you can keep track of your mods and manage them. A lot of times you can edit the configs from here, although a lot of those configs have hidden features that you often have to edit through the files. Now, just to test out um, this uh, version, I am just going to create a new world, creative, and just make it super flat, and then name it test. As with all things mods, the more mad mods you add, the longer loading times, but since we've only added one, there's not all that much more. Now, seems like a uh, normal Minecraft, right? Well, as you can see, there is now a second tab, and we can start looking at buildcraft things. Exciting, right? Okay, so, you want to quit Minecraft for the next step. There are a few mods that do not require dependencies, but a lot of others require dependencies. What are dependencies? Well, I'll give a little uh, example. So say you want Galacticraft. 
you would normally think that you would just cut and place Galactica planets and you'd be done. Click play. But as you can see, the game will start, but we'll show this message upon loading. Forge mod loaders found a problem with your Minecraft installation. The modern ver versions listed below could not be found. Galactic Craft Core, any. What this means is that you are missing a mod, a dependency. Dependencies are mods that other mods depend on. That's why they're called dependencies. The, the mods will not work without these other mods. Now, Galactic Craft Core is a dependency of Galactic Craft Planets. It, de it depends on that. And that depends on McDoodle Core, so you need to install both of these for this to work completely. So let's cut these, paste these, and now when we click play, and as you can see, once you have uh, the dependencies installed, it works. Now, if we go into a little test world, you can see, as you can probably see from, you can see that this is the thumbnail that you got some other things like buggies, two one rockets, which are galactic craft things, and so the mod has been installed correctly. Now this next little section is going to be on the pros and cons of mod packs. So first the pros. Some of the pros with especially with larger mod packs is that you don't have to debug the mods themselves, especially when it's, when it comes to configs. The second pro is that they are often balanced and the mods that are installed within them are designed to work well together so you're not going to have any disjointed bugs or errors and they're all going to work well in general. Now the cons of mod packs. Editing the configs for your own custom settings is going to be hard because it may cause other conflicts within the mod pack because of its hev heavily customized thing. The second is that you, it may take a while to get used to the mod pack as it will contain mods that you probably don't have much experience with because you don't know exactly every mod inside the mod pack and that can be uh, yeah that can be debilitating as it will take time to learn these new mods. Now that's on mod packs in general. Now creating mod packs. So I have used in the past, like mod, not necessarily mod packs I would call them, but just collections of mods that I threw into Minecraft to make videos. And those didn't get some form of copyright striking. So I don't think it's that you, so to use mods in a mod pack, you have to credit the authors. But as I just said, in my videos, I didn't get strikes. So I unless I am wrongly informed there's probably some better sources of information on this as I'm not a legal expert but I'm pretty sure the time you really need to cite the authors is either when a um, is when you use in a mod pack or B you make some uh, some kind of monetization whether or not that applies to YouTube videos like I said I'm not completely sure I'm not a legal expert uh, well, that concludes the rest of this tutorial video. Uh, there will be one more, uh, one or two more tutorials related to the modded Minecraft topic. The, the, one of them will be on debugging. The other will be on servers about it. Apart from that, this is true after uh, signing off. Goodbye.